What's going on guys and welcome back to another Satisfactory video. Where well, last time we placed this building down producing copper wire, cable and copper sheets. This all goes into storage and then sunk if the storage is full. But we also got rid of the biomass and replaced it with coal power. This given us a comfortable 1200 megawatts per minute. So I think it's about time we clean up this plant as well and double production and give it a, a nice juicy spice up. It produces iron plates, iron rods, screws, reinforced plates, smart plating and rotors. So what we're going to do is we're going to leave this production running for now, but over in this space right here, we're going to build this, the new iron plant. So remember, if you're enjoying these videos, please remember to like, subscribe and also leave a comment even if it's just an emoji to help me out. So as you can see, I've been a little busy. I wanted to get the boring stuff out of the way, and what I've done is if I jump down here, I've laid down the foundation of what I would like to do. So as you can see, we have gone for a seven meter gap here, uh, and I've kind of just put down two of the belts. We are going to be bringing in 120, because obviously we only have Mark II belts right now. And I've, uh, I've done some um, merging here. So we can see... There is a, a merger right there, and I've, I'm kind of going with this unique kind of design here, uh, which is something I've never kind of really done before, and utilizing these pillars as kind of like a thing for our conveyor bus. Um, and I want, when I get down to steel, um, I will be adding some form of decoration to this, and I do want to bring these legs down here as well and kind of like make some, uh, just some support, so it doesn't look like it's floating, because right now it is. So what I've done is that's a normal node right there, and then that's a normal node. Sorry, there are two impure nodes over there, and then that's a normal node, which is merging together here. So a 60, 30, and a 30 is, is 120. This is a pure node on its own individual line. And then that's just coming over to the building, which is being directly fed underneath uh, into the underfloor in here, which will then go on to the production lines. And I want to make these two into two plate machines. And then we're going to pull in two more uh, 120 lines, which is going to go into two rod lines. And then we're going to do the same for the screws, because I'm going to do some casted screws, um, which are just going to use direct ingots instead of using the rods. And yeah, I think that's the plan. Okay, so the first thing I kind of want to do is I want to start looking at where I want to start placing these machines. So as we know, I've got 120 iron ore coming in on each line. That means they're going to need to go into four smelters, or four constructors so i'm thinking this end pathway here is going to be a walkway but then like where the end of this foundation is i'm going to segregate it off with you know the pillars um that i normally kind of do so what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to create a um like a, like a pillar halfway up here um so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to uh grab a, a road barrier i'm just going to place this there remove that grab myself another foundation and just place that there. The reason I'm going to do that is because I've now just created a half block, right? So I'm going to bring this up by three. Like that. And then I'm going to grab myself a one meter foundation. And I'm going to bring this along by four. So two, three, four. Reason being, that's four constructors there, right? And then we're just going to do the same here. And then fill that in and replace this again. So now I've got that. And I can use that as a grid for down here. Um, and then downstairs, what I want to do, after I put this back, I can now go with four smelters down here. But I'm going to place them in the middle. And then I'm going to... The output side is actually going to go straight into the constructor through a floor hole up here. So I'm just going to grab myself some smelters. And then I'm going to go, say, for example, here. This gives us enough room to put a, a hole here with the barricade, with a floor hole to go underneath where the ore is going to come into. And then this is going to get sent upstairs. So if I had to stand right here, grab myself a uh, conveyor hole, look directly up. I can, I know I can just kind of put that there. And then a Mark 1 belt like that. That's going to come straight up, go upstairs, and the constructor is going to be directly above that. And then we're going to do a floor hole here. Like that. And then place the rest of them and then that is that done then i'm just going to go with what i normally do uh, is i'm just going to go from here remove these four foundations grab myself a power pole and then it's going to attach that right there just like this because i always do my powering underneath the ground connect all these up 
fill the floor back in. And then I'm just going to grab myself a Mark 1 lift, put that to here. And then I'm just going to grab myself a splitter and then line that up like that. So I know that's directly where that goes, like we normally do. And then I'm just going to remove this and then bring it back in again so it actually locks to the actual splitter itself. Just like that. And then I'm going to grab it and then I'm just going to duplicate this all the way along here and then connect all these up. And there we go. All four of them now attached. The power's attached. I've even connected the main 120 line coming in here. And then that's being split off 30 to each one. And then make sure my recipes are set. So 30, 30 ingots. And then what I want to do is I want to start putting our constructors down. So I want to make sure it's lined up to the lift and then make sure it's on the center foundation like this. And then just add the other four. That's that done. And then we're going to go into our here and then add mergers. And then I'm just going to bring these down um, into here. And I'm going to do that across all four. Connect up all the belts. It is going to be um, outputting 20. So two, four, six, eight. So that's going to be 80 per minute. So we are going to need a Mark II belt going down this spine. And then a conveyor hole at the end of the mergers. Then it's going to need a lift. Uh, well, a Mark II lift, I should say. And then add the lifts on the input sides. And then just assign iron plates as the recipe. Copy them settings. And then just paste them on all of the constructors. So what I've thought about doing is adding the big metal pillars like here. But I'm going to take it up by five. So I'm going to zoop this up. Come back a little bit. And then take that up. Maybe five. No, let's take it up by six. And then that gives us the opportunity to do some roof supports up there, if that makes sense. So, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the cable from there, attach it to the pillar like that. But then on that pillar, I'm going to grab it and then place it. Well, grab that and then place it underneath there. And then take that all the way through the pillar, which will then connect to this point right here. So if I grab myself a Mark, uh, Mark uh, 1 outlet, connect that there, place that there like this, then I can grab that and then I'm going to take it all the way up to, if I can reach it, right there and connect that to that. And that hides the cable in the in this pillar right here. And I think that's going to look make it look a little cleaner than what it, what it could be. Um, so then all we need to do is just hide all that up. And then just duplicate it and add a, a little bit of a trim and all that kind of stuff. And I'll kind of align everything as well. And this is what you get. So it's kind of looking all right so far. Uh, I've kind of added windows on the outside here with the, you know, with the pillars trim going around the bottom. And it's kind of creating uh, something. I just don't know what yet. Um, but it's not fully finalized. I definitely want to get some more stuff in here. Uh, we just kind of need to start working on the next thing because I need to get these two. And then duplicate it here because I've just come up with a solution. Is because as you know, uh, with rods, we actually need. Um, let's just go into here and I can quickly show you. Uh, as you know, it requires uh, 15 ingots and you're going to get 15 rods. And it's a one to two ratio for every one smelter. You need two constructors. So, what I'm thinking about doing is I'm, I'm thinking about overclocking the constructors on the second floor. This then saves space. So, instead of having eight constructors going up this way and up that way because i need to duplicate this twice i'm just going to do exactly the same what i've done here but at the side here so we've got four all together but the top shelf is just going to be overclocked to 200 percent on the rod recipes oh i should state as well that i did purchase the window walls door walls and gates in case anybody's following along so i did purchase these with coupons hence why we got windows and there we go i've now added the other two to equal four but also as you can tell i've added walkways to kind of just give a little bit of access to the top shelf and then on the back end of the building you can see i've now added two more 120 lines which are coming from these two normal nodes here which are being merged together and then decided to bring in this pure as well but as you can see, I've also created two extra lines here because that's where I want to bring in two more 120 lines for the casted screws. And then I think I'm going to create a brand new floor on top of these constructors, well, on top of the pillars to actually create like a, a second floor. So that's what I went and did. 
So when looking at this, you can see there's two halves. If we look directly down the middle of the screen, we can see four smelters on the left, four smelters on the right. So 120 iron is going to get sent to these four, and then 120 is going to get sent to these ones. So as I always say, never look at the big picture, only look at it as segments. And if you work in segments, you can work out your build by just duplication. And then we've got five constructors. So some of you must be wondering why we've only got five constructors for the casted screw recipe when they require 12.5 each. And that's because if we do the maths, 120 iron ingots divided by 12.5 per minute is 9.6. So that's going to require 9.6 machines. So what I've done is one machine, two machine, three machine, four machine, or overclock to 200% to represent two machines each. The end machine, however, is overclocked 260%. So it's doing one machine plus a second machine worth, but underclocked to 60%. So this is actually creating 80 per minute. But if you do the math on a normal 200% machine, this is sending 120, uh, well, sorry, 100 per minute, 100, 100, 100, and this one's sending 80. If you divide 80 by four, that is 20. And if we know our belt capacity limit, that's sending 100 out, that's sending 100 out, this one's sending 80. If we come around here, we can see that this belt is bringing out the 80 screws and it's being divided uh, and being split into each of these lines. So that's now going to be a 120 screw line. This one's going to be a 120, 120, and yes, you guessed it, 120. And that right there is what is called load balancing for those that don't know. And most people, as what we normally build, is a manifold line. And for those that don't know what a manifold line is, it's just, it's just this, what we've been doing all the time. It's when you get one belt to go into a bunch of splitters and that split off into the machines. This is a manifold line. A load balancing is where you send the specific amount of items via merges and splitters and merging it together to create the exact number going into the machines at the same time. If you would like me to do a video on it, a dedicated guide video, please let me know in the comments and I will do that just for you. Okay, so what I've done next is I've decided to connect up the power just to make sure there's no inconsistencies with my outputs or my inputs by me being an idiot or a spoon by missing belts or missing any power cables because we all do it within our builds, right? I just wanted to make sure, and I'm not seeing any so far. We can see that the screws are up and running uh, and everything's nice and lush, but I have done something pretty cool, which is on the outside, I've added a bit of a screw waterfall. So when the whole building design is complete and we can see all this, all this running, it's going to be nice just to see that constant blue stream coming down. But I'm not too certain on this little U-bend I've done here, so I'll just kind of ignore this for now. I'm just kind of playing around and working with it. Uh, I, I, it's, it's, it's on my mind, and if it's on my mind, it's going to get deleted more than likely. So that's what I did. I just removed it. It was on the back of my brain. It was annoying me. It didn't look right. So as you should do, you should delete. So what I did instead is I created an underfloor for the underfloor. Because we've got eight screw lines, that's a lot of floor space. And then trying to turn it here where the iron is was just the no-go. So I just tucked it underneath that by creating an additional three meter flooring, which then gets sent to these assemblers. And that's because we're making reinforced iron plates and rotors. And remember, if you ever want to see any of this stuff that I'm building at a slower pace, please go and check out my VOD channel. There's like four to five hours worth of video content like that could go up. So once this video goes out, which is episode three, you will see uh, multiple episode three behind the scene videos go up there. So then you can go over here. How did he make these? Then you can figure it out. But I'm going to give you a quick explanation how. As we know, reinforced plates requires 60 screws per each machine. So as you guessed it, we've got four machines right here, which need 240 screws, which is consuming two lines. So if we go onto the underfloor of the underfloor, you can see there's two screw lines here. The first one over there is going into the first two assemblers. And then the second one is being split off, going into these two splitters, sending 60 into the other two. Then that means the other four lines that are moving are going in to the rotors. Because as you know, rotors require 100 screws, which means four 120 lines are coming down. 120 is going into that one, into that one, into that one, into that one. But these are smart splitters. So in the center output, I've got the screws going up to the assembler, but the additional 20 that is not going to go into the machine will go onto an overflow. And that's the same for all the other ones. 
They then all merge into one line, which then equals a belt of 80. Which now that means we've only got two lines of 120 screws coming out. So we've got 240 screws right here. Plus the additional 80 means we've got 320 screws left in total. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is I want to put down and work on the frame recipes. And as you can see, I put three assemblers down here. You must be wondering why. That's because I'm looking at my rods right here. Uh, and each of these little modular kind of engine things we built here are actually sending 120 rods down each. And we're making 240 in total. And these rods right here are actually being sent to the rotors. And as we know, rotors require 20 rods per minute. So that's two, four, six, eight. And I want to kind of maximize as many as we can out of this line. So if you do the maths and this require 12 rods per minute, that's technically 12, 24, 36 added to 80 is uh, is actually 116 leaving us with four rods excess out of this machine because i don't want to go into this one because i kind of want to get this sent to storage eventually as well as the second plate line and we've maximized the reinforced plates out of this line so what i'm doing is i've just gone down here and i put a splitter right here onto this rod line because them rods are going to the rotors uh, and then because, well, this is stopped actually because it's got nowhere else to go. So we don't have storage down there until later on. So what I want to do is I just want to grab ourselves a lift, which is going to be a Mark 1 because we only need it for 12 input. Grab ourselves a splitter and then just place this right there and then do it for the rest of them. Just like this. But I've actually done the other entrance as well. I'll just put the other splitters down because this is what the reinforced plates are going to need. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab myself a Mark 1 belt just to go into there. So that means the rods are now going to get put into here. 12 is going to go into there. 12 and 12 and 12. And then the 4 is just going to get pushed out this way. Um, but what I'm going to do, actually what I should have done is actually put this as a smart splitter. That's what I should have technically done, right? It would have made a lot more sense. So, smart splitter. And then put you to there. And then bring in the belt back in there. Grab the lift again. Place you down. And are you snapping? You are. And then make sure on the left output, it's going to be rods. Well, rod. And then center is going to be overflow. And then we're just going to bring this down here. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to put you there and then lift you up. And I'll explain in a little bit why. Um, so now I've done that. We've got the rods coming in. We need to pull in the reinforced plates. So I've actually spun these around here already, which is... Wait, is this the, the reinforced plates? Wait, which is the reinforced plate line? I'm, I've lost track. It is this one, isn't it? It is this one. Okay. Oh my god, I'm losing my bloody marbles. Okay, so I'm going to grab this, and I'm going to lift this up, and I'm going to bring this across here and send it over these lines. So I'm going to line that up there, bring you back by two, lift you up by one, and then bring that down into there. So that's how the reinforced plates coming down here as well. But what I want to do is... Oh, I should have put this as a smart splitter as well. God damn it. Okay, there we go. Now I've added it. See, I still make mistakes, even though I'm getting out kind of trying to get this prepped. So, right. Now that's a smart splitter. Reinforced plates are going right, and then overflow is going this way. So now I want to bring this out here. Because what I'm doing is I'm bringing the rotors this way. I'm bringing these excess rods this way. I'm bringing um, these reinforced plates. Um, these plates. These are all the ones that are being made. This line here is actually from um this excess line here because what i'm doing is i'm bringing 80 down from there the hunt uh, the 80 from there merging these two together making this as a 120 line sending the excess down this way which is going to go to storage because eventually i kind of want to make a whole storage in here so everything's all in one place and being sunk very much like what we did with a copper factory so after a little bit of work we've got the frames being made but also, we've got something else in the background. And that is a new network system we've just added that's bringing all the excess items that's not being consumed with the assemblers. So every single one of the excess belts are going into a smart splitter. And then the overflow belts come along here into these lifts into the resource sinks. 
So I've kind of come up with this little bit of a design here for our storage, which is integrated into the building. And if we come down here, we've added a little doorway to see if it's going to work to access the storage room itself. That means all these core machines now will be running at 100% efficiency because I have double checked and rechecked the lines to make sure that everything is working. Okay, so after about six hours or so, we kind of come up with this kind of design, but I don't know what to think of it. I played around with different textures, trying to find out where I can make an entrance. And just kind of playing around with a color palette. But after quite a bit of a discussion with a Twitch chat and coming up with some ideas, some people liked it, some people didn't. And I have to agree, I don't think it's my style. So just like as you should as a satisfactory player, if you don't like it, delete it, rebuild it. So I made this. So on that bombshell, thank you so much for watching, guys, and check out my other content here. Wait, actually, I should mention, I totally forgot to mention I needed more power because that building consumed way more than 1,200 megawatts. So I built this platform here. You already know how I do call, so if you want more of this, let me know, and I'll just show you more of it in episode four. So guys, thank you so much for watching, and as always, keep smiling.